Imagine you are a beautiful sprawling tree. You have a big strong trunk, roots that stretch deep into the earth and branches that reach toward the sky. One day you notice something isn't quite right. Your leaves are brittle and full of little holes and your branches are drooping with heaviness. Upon inspection, you can't find any obvious reason for this change in your state of being. You start to panic immediately and take better care of your leaves and branches. You spray them and medicate them and more, but nothing changes. The leaves you are working with are merely the visual result of whatever the problem is with your tree. The soil of this tree represents your foundation. The soil is where it all comes from. It's who you really are at the core. It's the sum of all the things that have influenced you. All the rocks and rubbish that have gotten mixed right in with you will affect every part of the tree. Everything in that soil becomes part of your being. The roots of your tree represent the energy system and pathways. If your soil is full of imbalances, just as a tree's soil could be full of environmental stresses, those roots will become imbalanced from your soil, too, and affect your entire beautiful tree. It may take some time for its effect to reach your leaves and branches, maybe even years, but eventually it will. The leaves of your tree represent your organs, glands, muscles, body systems, chemicals, and hormones. By the time you find those little holes in your brittle leaves, you will not be able to bring the tree back to health by treating the leaves directly. You can't just spray the problem away. True healing will not come from caring for your leaves in retrospect. It comes from going deep into your soil and correcting the base from which the tree grows. You have to come back to who you really are by clearing away those old energies that are contaminating your base. You just have to clean up that soil. You must become who you really are. You must be the real you. That means to love, accept, and be yourself no matter what. You can't contract your energy for others, or for fear, or for anything else. No light dimming or living small allowed. This journey of healing is to be yourself. In fact, true healing is not measured by reaching a place where you are free of negative emotions or have even attained a physical healing. I truly believe that straying from and separating from your inner being or who you really are is the root of discontent in the mind and body. You are not broken and do not need fixing. You are not wrong and do not need writing. You are not in need of self-help. You are in need of self-love. The only thing you need to do is find yourself and stay there. There are many ways in which we diminish our true selves. It is easy for me to say, be the true you or become who you really are. But it can be difficult to recognize how we are not doing or being that. As we grow into adults, we can drift so far from our true nature that we lose our reference point for who that person inside really is. In an effort to conceptualize this idea for you, I am offering you my own very personal list as an example. These are the things that I now see caused me to suppress my truest, deepest light and subsequently contributed to illness. I suggest you make a similar list of all the ways you think you are doing the same. You might be as scared making your list as I am sharing mine, but we are all born brave. Fear. It was referred to as anxiety throughout life, yet it was an underlying fear in the core of my being. Some of the common fears that I experience include the fear of expressing emotions, the fear of failure in any endeavor, the fear of upsetting others, the fear of self-trust, the fear of losing my parents, the fear of accidents or injury, the fear of sport-related injuries, the fear of making mistakes, the fear of travel in confined spaces, the fear of crowds, the fear of germs, the fear of losing control, the fear of financial instability, and the fear of disapproval from others. Living dominated by fear is not the intended way of life. 
Relationships. I found myself entangled in relationships that I knew were not suitable for me. These relationships led to situations where I hesitated to express myself. Constantly worried about upsetting my partner, felt inadequate or uninteresting, and assumed responsibility for resolving my partner's insecurities. What's even more damaging is that I was not honest with myself about these relationships. I convinced myself against what my intuition was telling me, which was that these relationships were detrimental to my well-being. Forcing ourselves into situations that don't align with our inner truth causes inner conflict and is harmful to our overall being. This self-editing and filtering hindered me from being my authentic self, challenging myself. While in some aspects of life I took on excessive responsibility in others, I shied away from challenges. Since I never enjoyed school and had low self-esteem regarding academics, I refrained from pursuing education that could have led me to a more fulfilling path. I allowed fear to limit my life choices, such as avoiding the pursuit of a four-year college education due to the anxiety associated with the required testing. This self-doubt restricted my life's possibilities. I want to emphasize that success doesn't necessarily require a college degree, and I personally don't possess one, which I am content with. However, I firmly believe in calling ourselves to greatness, holding ourselves accountable for pursuing challenging endeavors, and not shying away from opportunities that may seem intimidating but can propel us forward. Self-criticism. I was excessively self-critical to the point that if someone else had treated me the way I treated myself, it would have been considered abusive. I berated myself for every minor mistake or imperfection and had unreasonably high expectations for myself. I struggled to let go and enjoy life without constantly monitoring my behavior. Embracing joy is inherent to our true nature, and suppressing it is counterintuitive to well-being. Learning to be kinder to myself was not only beneficial, but essential. Self-sacrifice. I had a strong aversion to potentially hurting others' feelings, even unintentionally. This fear of causing harm at any cost took a toll on me emotionally and physically. I found myself doing things I didn't want to do, consistently placing myself at the bottom of my priorities, always saying yes to others and no to myself, enduring suffering to spare others, and being overly understanding towards those who mistreated me. Self-sacrifice manifests in various forms and is invariably detrimental. I hope this list gives you some solid examples of how we block our true selves from coming forth. When I share it with clients, they often say things like, Wow, I can't imagine you could be that screwed up. I laugh because I know there must be things missing from that list. But I am most definitely proof that one can come out of all of this on the other side, happier and healthy. The most important thing is to move through it all and find a way to be unapologetically you. The more you can do that, the better your life will feel. It's called being in alignment with who you are, not with everyone else, and it's more amazing than you can imagine. Your energy will flow, your body will be in full healing mode, and you'll be on your way to miracles. As a bonus, life will also be super fun and a million times easier than it is now. The biggest work of our lives is releasing anything that does not fit within that paradigm. It doesn't always happen overnight, but as long as you are willing to be here now over and over again, I can say with complete honesty that this work is for you. This journey of true and lasting healing is not one that cuts you off from the world and reality. It's one that integrates the best parts of you right into it all. The big question, as Joseph Campbell says in The Power of Myth, is whether you are going to be able to say a hearty yes to your adventure. Now, are you ready to drop your bag of shit to take the coolest trip of your life? <laughs>